So now what we've done is we've created a database model that can be turned into tables. Okay, so now the next thing we're going to do is do SQL to create tables that achieve these kinds of things. And you can go along, there should be a handout that's associated, or you can take the slides and cut and paste some of this SQL to run in your PHP MyAdmin or whatever SQL gadget you've got. So um, you're going to create a database. We'll create a database called Music. So you use these things to make a database, keep it separate from our other databases that we've got running. And, um, and so we're going to run a series of create, uh, create table statements. And we're going to kind of work outward from artist back to track. So we have to establish the leaves of our little picture before we can work our way in. And so we work our way from outside in on these create statements. So we're going to create a table, and this is the same as a create table, but we're going to start using a few more specific things. So we'll say create table artist. Boat, come back. Create table artist. Create table artist and a primary key. Now, what happens is we want the database to manage the primary keys. We are going to tell it to automatically increment and provide it, which means we don't have to put these on insert statements because they will be given to us as they're inserted. If you're running this in code, um, you would insert the statement and then say, what key did I get? And that'd be okay. And so this is, artist has a name, okay? And so all this thing, integer, not null, auto increment, key, is communicating to the database, manage this for us, make it be integers, and keep adding to this number, add one to this number each time we put something in. Then what we do is we create a table called album. And it's going to have a primary key, album ID. It's going to have a, a logical key a title. And we're going to tell it to index that title using a certain way. Uh, B-tree index is a index that's good for looking up um, entire strings or prefixes of strings as well as sorting. So we might want to sort by title. So we're going to use a B-tree index, okay? So that's how we indicate that it's a logical key. And you can have more than one logical key if you want. And now we also put a foreign key in. So artist ID is the, is the, is the starting point of one of those arrows, and we call that an integer. Now the other thing that we do is we communicate to MySQL. And this is a place where different databases do things differently. And so this is pretty much my SQL specific syntax, or at least mostly specific syntax, where we're basically adding what's called a constraint. And that says, this is a foreign key constraint. My column artist ID is a reference, a foreign key, to the field artist ID in the table artist. So what's happening here is you're telling the database, telling MySQL, when you're inserting a record, when it's looking for artist ID, when you're putting a number in like two or four or five, it's going to check to see if it exists in this table artist. And if it doesn't exist, it's going to yell at you. It's not going to let you violate the constraint. Now, you're like, oh, that's kind of mean. No, you're the one that put the constraint in. So you're putting the constraint in, which tells the database, enforce the rule that I've decided to enforce on myself, right? If you don't want a constraint, well, don't, just don't put that in. But because we want to do this as a foreign key, and we want to do it sort of in a responsible manner, we're basically saying this points at this. And whatever number I put in this artist ID column, insist that there is a corresponding row that's there. Now, this on delete update and on update cascade, on delete cascade, on update cascade. What we're communicating there is if an artist ID row, or if a particular row is deleted from this artist table, it will go through all of the rows in this table and delete all the ones that have the corresponding artist ID. On delete cascade means that a delete in this will cascade into this where the artist ID corresponds. That's a way of ensuring that your database stays clean, and we'll talk more about that later. The same is true on update, which is much more rare, where if there was a row and it had, it was number was four and we changed it to be 24, then in here we'd have a, well, I'm making such a mess here. So if there was a row, something, and there was a bunch of fours down here that were effectively pointing, these are all pointing back, right? So there's an artist ID, and we somehow went into this table and changed that to 24, it would then correspondingly change all these to 24, okay? 
And so that's what on update cascade means is if this artist ID number is updated in this table, it is updated in all the corresponding rows in this table. That's a more rare thing. It is less rare to take the row four, 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 four. There's a bunch of fours here and a row four here. And if you delete this row, it goes through and cleans up all these rows. That's a, the far more con common thing. And we'll talk about that in a second. So this is all part of the create statement. There is three columns, album ID, title, and artist ID. We've, we've marked album ID as special because it's our primary key. We have indicated that uh, title is a logical key and that artist ID is a foreign key. And so we're modeling all of that and we're exposing to MySQL. You could ignore both of these things. These are sort of optional, but usually the more you take what you know about your data and hint to MySQL as to how it's going to be used, the smarter things work out for you. Because MySQL is really smart, but if you don't tell it what you're planning on doing, it can't anticipate what you're doing. So if we take this pattern and we create all these other things, right? We're going to make a genre, then we're going to create a track, right? And you got title, rating, and length. We got a primary key, yada, yada. We're going to have logical key of title. And then we have two foreign key constraints. And we just kind of concatenate these things together. And when we're all done, those things will all be there. And so we fully modeled these four tables. We fully informed MySQL of the foreign keys, right? Okay, so that's cool. So we go through and we create all these tables. We have to create them in the right order because the foreign key constraints assume the table was created earlier, right? So, so if you haven't created the album table and the genre table when you're running this SQL, this SQL will blow up and say, whoa, table doesn't exist. So you got to do them in order and I've got them in an order that will work because I do artist, album, genre, track. As long as you do that in order, they will sort of build and then MySQL will make this web of connections as you're creating them. So you kind of run through all these things and you know, here we got a, a artist ID and you can see that it's not allowed to be null, it's auto incremented, yada yada and off we go and it, there's indexes and all the things that you've told it to do are going to start showing up here. So then we do all these things. We got album, artist, genre, then we're gonna make the track one. So that's all the track SQL. So we'll make that, and when we're all done, we have our track, right? And uh, the foreign keys are not well shown in uh, this view, but these and this and that are foreign keys, and away you go. Um, they are, MySQL is aware of them and will enforce them on insert statements. Now we're gonna start putting some data in. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna also put data in kind of from the outside in, um, and that's because when we're going to reference the artist Led Zeppelin, we need to know what the number is. And so we're going to insert into the artist table uh, Led Zeppelin, right? Insert into artist, name column. What's particularly missing is the primary key. But that's because it's going to be automatically done by the database. And so the primary key is automatically done by the database. And if you take a look, it will insert the two records we've asked and it will assign an artist ID for them, right? So that the artist ID has been assigned and away you go, okay? <coughs> and, and so now we know this. Now, in the manual work, you sort of have to keep this scribbling like, oh, Led Zeppelin is one and ACDC is two because you, you can't use the word Led Zeppelin anywhere else in this thing and we're going to make tracks that belong to Led Zeppelin, right? Or albums that belong to Led Zeppelin. Now, in a program, there is a variable. You can basically say, oh, run this insert and give me like an X what that number is. And you can ask the database, what was the number that you just assigned after that insert? But we just have to go look at it because we're doing it in slow motion all by hand. But when programs do it, they like, boop, what was that number? And then they have the number in a variable. Then they can put that number in later insert statements, which we're going to do by hand. And we just got to remember that Led Zeppelin is one and ACDC is two. So we're gonna start again, we're gonna do the genre. We insert that, we end up with rock and metal. And so we now know what the little numbers are for rock and metal. Rock is one, metal is two. I never remember what these are. I don't have, don't have them written down on a piece of paper. I probably should write them down on a piece of paper. Hang on, let me get a piece of paper here and a pen for myself. So one is Led Zeppelin, two is ACDC, then on the genre, one is rock, 
and two is metal. So here's my variables. I got this on a little sheet of paper now. So now I have two tables. I've got my artist and my genre. So we haven't made any foreign keys yet. We haven't made any foreign keys yet. Um, now we're going to insert an album. And if you recall in the album, right, we have a title, artist ID. We still have a primary key. Album ID is the primary key here. Don't worry about that. It's going to be done automatically, right? So albums, we're going to refer to albums too, and so we have to have a primary key. But artist ID is a foreign key in albums because we're in the album table. Album table. Okay, so we have to explicitly insert, because we're the ones that know which artist this album belongs to somewhere in our user interface, right? We've got, oh, we're going to put something in for ACDC. So in, when we put into album, we've got to insert the title artist ID. We do not have to insert album ID because that's going to be done automatically for us. Then we have to put in the title and the artist ID. But we're not putting in ACDC. We're putting in two because we remembered that ACDC is actually two. And the same is true when we do Led Zeppelin IV, artist ID one. That's ironic. It's not really four, it's IV, it's a string, right? So Led Zeppelin is one, and so we remember that. If we were running this in PHP, we would have a variable called dollar last insert or something like that. Okay, so you get the, the point. And, and these end up just being numbers. Now, if you had put seven in here, it would blow up because it would say, look, I don't have an artist row of seven, and that's part of the constraint. So you have to put in legit numbers that you've put into these other tables. So that's why the order of these things is so important as you're building these relationships. You put the thing in, then you point to it. Then you put this thing in and you point to it, and you're connecting all these little guys together. Kind of fascinating. You've got to get it right. But when it works, it's glorious. Then we got the tricky thing. We gotta put all the tracks in, right? So we got, uh, let's see, yeah, we got albums. So again, the track ID is the primary key, so we don't have to worry about that. All this stuff, track, title, length, rating, and count, that's just data. And then album ID and genre ID, that's modeling the little arrows, right? And so Black Dog is from album, two. oh wait, I forgot the album numbers. Well, I should have wrote those down. But whatever, you get the point. So this is album two, album two, album one, album one. It's genre one, genre one, and genre two, genre two. Now, I started by talking, I started talking by saying you're not allowed to, to replicate string data in more than one place. You can replicate, but we still got to replicate data because there are more than one track on an album. So we have to put albums in twice. Our, here's a track, here's a track, and it's on the same album. It's totally awesome to rep replicate numbers because they're efficient. Strings are bad, numbers are good. We went through all these machinations just to get to the point where we're using numbers as proxies for strings. So you do all this stuff and now we have relationships. And it's hard to see, but if you carefully did everything, you now can effectively reconstruct these little arrows. These foreign key columns are the starting points of arrows. And then these are the lookups, right? So you can think of, you know, that links to rock, that links to rock, this links to metal, this links to metal. And so we are using these numbers here and here and also here as proxies for those strings. That's what we did. We, we worked really hard to make that happen.